like Dennis, uh, which left, and Misha, not to use uh, transparencies. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. mm. So I will want to tell you some few things which kind of my personal secrets about the no. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. Thank you. Oops. Uh, no, it's kind of so. So I'll speak about regulators in algebraic case theory, which. Uh, sir, when can it hear you? So really, okay. Oops. I think it's really the switch because. Okay, not. Okay, maybe I'll put it. Oh, huh? like this? Is it okay? Okay? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's not. Oh? But it's very low, so who has the control? Okay. So this switch is very delicate, so, um, yeah, I don't know what we can do. Oh, like this? No. No? So this switch is... It's just very delicate, it's not really staying on. Yeah, yeah. So just maybe just on the outside, so. Okay. Okay. Oh, not okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I will, will try to write uh, everything on the desk in this case. Yeah. So n will be integers and regulators are mapped from algebraic series of complex numbers to uh, uh, the thing, so they are called balance on Borel regulators, but essentially are Chern Simons classes. Uh, so this thing is isomorphic to R plus R mod Z. Here are Borel classes, and here are Chern Simons, or Trigger Simons classes sitting are of flat connections. So I will not uh, tell you what is case theory. It's, I will I don't need it at all. So up to some small torsion. So the image of this regulator map is uh, here it's up to some torsion, which I don't know exactly what is it, uh, is the following set. I consider integrals of trace just remove it of nth power of curvature over two n dimensional manifold as a C infinity compact oriented manifold. But the boundary is not empty, so it's manifold with boundary. Uh, F is uh, uh, curvature of some connection. And, uh, and some tendency bundle. And the conditions 
discourages flat on the boundary. So, yeah, there is some. Uh, if you multiply this thing by some constant, uh, then to to the content in this thing, and we'll try to imply right right hand side by some constant to contain the left. So the torsion is bounded for each n, globally bounded. Uh, it's not exactly equal, but uh, okay. And this should be considered modular two pi i and z. Okay. Uh, so for n equal one, so the last time which I'll use K0, K1 is C star and regulator is uh, so regulator is just logarithm map to C mod 2 pi i z so we get whole uh, set here but for n uh, greater than one image is countable set Sorry? Well, if you ha have a number, you can take a logarithm. It will define up to 2 pi i. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, I didn't get. Uh, no, it's logarithm. Okay. okay. So image is countable. It's actually a billion subgroup here because one can make formal sums of this stuff, and uh, it's countably generated. And we kind of know what the size of this uh, image. So assuming some uh, things about transcendental numbers, uh, size is roughly speaking is the same as the set of all algebraic numbers intersecting with R or I R depending for an odd or even. So it's huge countable set. Mm. And uh, so I would like to tell you what kind of numbers we get here if we in C as regulators. So and we'll talk to here. So for n equal 1, we get all complex numbers. And for n equal 2, we get very special numbers. And the dispenser group, I have the following description. Uh, namely, this image of a second regulator of K3 is the same. Uh, the following set, again, up to some portion which I don't care at the moment. So I consider a finite sum of some function L2 of numbers Zi, where Zi belongs to uh, or you can put here Q bar. The answer will be the same. So this will be basically algebraic numbers such that sum over 1 minus the i which the i is 0 uh, as considered the element is which square of C star is abstract abelian group <laughs> sorry you were on the mic for one second oh okay <laughs> okay yeah and this L2 is modified the logarithm is this following function imaginary part of the logarithm yeah the logarithm is this beautiful function okay and uh, this is defined for Sorry, for, for, z, uh, for small z and this unique real analytic function. Okay. 
Okay. I don't know. Oh, it works, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this function is a uh, real analytic and one-valued function on C star minus 0 and 1. So that uh, the picture, by the way, what does it mean? So uh, it looks kind of horrifying. And typical uh, situation is the following. Suppose we have some square matrix with integral coefficients and we solve equation one system of equations, one over the i is product over all j, is it j to power a i j. So it's a system, if we have n numbers, we have n, equation, n equations on n, n numbers, we should expect some solutions. And uh, then it's completely clear from this that the switch, sum of edge product is zero, because it's symmetric and here it's skew symmetric. Okay, so uh, that's a picture with the logarithms. And uh, Don Zaguer uh, conjectured that something like this is going on for high K groups, and the regulators are sums of high polylogarithms. So there are some functions. So the Im image of regulator of n of k to n minus 1, c is set of certain sums of n logarith modified n logarithms, which I don't want to explain what are somehow related with the logarithms, uh, it's polylogarithms, and, uh, and there are some conditions uh, much more complicated like this. So it, it was all discovered on some computer experiments uh, essentially, and uh, so Sasha Goncharov proved, proved it for n equals three. So for three log logarithms, is this picture still okay? In general, it's not clear what is going on. So uh, uh, at least in all computer experiments, it looks as if uh, there are enough polylogarithms uh, poly to express values of regulators, but morally it should be wrong. So it's still. Uh, something very strange. And I want to propose a kind of some reformulation of the gear conjecture and to explain a very short formula for these conditions which I put here. And at the same time, I, uh, here I made something wrong. So here it's not an image of whole regulator group, but only imaginary part of of the story, so it's only half of information. Mm. So now I will give a different description. So I will use not this modified polylogarithm, but usual polylogarithms, which is L i n, which is sum of the k, k to n. This sum, this is multi-valued function, and it's and it should easy to see what are what is the behavior of this function. First of all, uh, this the, uh, first polylogarithm is just logarithm one over one minus z just. Progressions and then one can write these differential equations, and from this follows that just by induction, the jump of uh, n's polylogarithm along the cut from 1 to plus infinity. So we start from 0, make an analytic continuation, it's analytic outside of this cut. And if we cross the cut, the jump will be 2 pi i, which is here, and then log z 
n minus 1 or n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so that uh, a function now I'll describe this Im image of regulator map for dial logarithms. Case. So Uh, suppose we have some complex variables, arbitrary many complex variables, which are non zero. And I will construct a lot of monomials here. So if I have multi index, then I have a mono Laurent monomial in these variables. Let's for different moral monomials fix some coefficients, fix some coefficients which are zero for almost all alpha, so finite combination and make a function of these variables which is uh, sum of dialogarithms of monomials with integral coefficients. And uh, in fact, it's convenient to add to this function some another function, which is by linear form in logarithms where alpha a i j are again symmetric integral matrices. Matrices. So this is. So, so we had a huge set of functions. We can make arbitrary linear combinations, so arbitrary many variables. And the theorem is that regulator of K3 is, which is this notation, is again up to some small factor, is a set of all critical values. of all branches of all such functions phi and arbitrary variables. So it's just a set of critical values and the field or whatever was it? Sorry? It lies in what the field is in complex numbers mod oh it's complex numbers mod two pi the value regulator lies in the set. Sorry? Is a this is a set. Oh, the image of uh, no K three is a set, and so it's also the set. And so the set of all possible values. It's a critical values of all various sums of dialogarithms from all monomials. Yeah, it's actually it's extremely simple uh, theorem. Uh, one can prove that one contains another, and, another and so they are equal, at least in one direction is the following. So suppose we have this, uh, we have a critical point of a function. So, uh, so we have a critical point of the function, it means that d or um, dzi of f is equal to zero for all i. And let's write what is the derivative. Oh, maybe I put here d log zi. It's more convenient and so it's the same as sum of alpha and alpha and alpha i. And here put first logarithm and then take sum of g, uh, j log g. So, it's, so we get this equation and this is logarithm of 1 over something. So what, what we get, we get it the product of the j to power alpha a, a, a j is equal to product of 1 minus the alpha to power n alpha times alpha i. Okay, so we have this identity and then uh, we are taking basically some of dialog with more trivial expressions here. Mm. And 
the corollary from this thing is that sum over n alpha is the alpha is the alpha I think it's equal to zero and let's write it uh, so because it's product of monomial to write sum of alpha i and alpha, alpha i the i and then it, we can write it sum over i Sorry? Wedge over Q? No, it's over Z. Over Z. Ah. Okay. Okay, and by this identity we get to this sum of I J alpha J. And this is equal to zero because the matrix is symmetric. So it's completely straightforward calculation that at least you get element get solution of this system of equation. Uh, okay, and what's going on for higher regulators? So, uh, this was only for K3, and uh, And for high regulators, one can do essentially the same thing. One consider functions uh, which are combinations of n logarithms. And here, uh, because we have this monodrome, it's reasonable to add also log z to n to divide to n factorial. And certain sum of, again, another coefficient, c alpha. And I put C. Add simple thing. And uh, the gear conjecture can be reformulated in the following way. So it's, all, it's also was formulated on for real imaginary part. And here, uh, and uh, reformulation is the following. So a set of Regulators is a set of kind of high critical values. I consider all possible functions, all branches of these functions, and I consider values at points where first derivative is zero, second derivative, I mean all Taylor coefficients are zero, and n up to n minus first derivative. Risk is zero. Mm. So this is, yeah, it's all, uh, if consider Taylor expansions, that all first coefficients up to n minus first order vanish. Yeah, this thing shouldn't exist, of course. It's kind of overdetermined system, and, uh, but analogously, K series it's also overdetermined system in the same way. So how to... I don't know how to understand. It's, it's really something very strange. This high critical points. Uh, so let's compare with chern simons functional. So this chern simons functional, I denote this by in the same setting, and I have manifold with boundary. Chern simons functional is equal to one over n factorial. So I'm not really sure about this number. Again, trace. Open, but I, I don't put conditions that the connection is flat on the boundary. So we can assume also that bundles are trivial, it's not a great deal. Oh, for n equal to this is, uh, and for trivial bundle, and connection is d plus a, by integration by parts, it's the same as integral of trace or over three-dimensional manifold, a d a plus two third a q, which sense functional, and uh, connections which are flat on the boundary, so it depends on the connection on the boundary, 
and connections are flat on the boundary if and only if they are critical points of chern simons functional. Ah, so it's com in complete analogy, is here we have critical points of some things, and uh, here's chern simons mm, For n bigger than two, critical points are strange things. I don't understand what are they. For example, if we have uh, n equals 3, then the critical points are the same as connections on five dimension manifolds. I did. The square as a form is 0. It's five dimension manifolds. We get five indices here. So it's not over determined system. It's some system of nonlinear differential equations and I have no idea what. Does it mean? Uh, but flat connections are points where uh, yeah, not only the first variation derivative is zero, but also the second variation derivative is zero, and so on and so forth. So it's in uh, high dimensions, flat connections are exactly uh, points where first derivatives in functional space are zero. So it's at least it explain something in this description of k theorem. Okay, that's all I, which I can say about these numbers. We really don't understand them for static from four logarithms. It's still a mystery. Uh, then, uh, the thing which I will discuss is mainly dialogarithms now. So, in general, if one has this functional, one can try write integral. Uh, functional integral. And uh, for n greater than 2, it says, again, it's not clear what to do already from the phys point of view of physics because we have points the second derivative is zero, so we cannot make perturbation with quadratic part plus something. It starts from cubic term, and uh, there's no particles. Uh, so it's some kind of new physics should appear here. But for n equal to is uh, still reasonable, and for n equal to it gives us famous quantum manifolds invariants. So, so Witten uh, kind of says that uh, this, this integral let me maybe wait. It's more good. Uh, so uh, these integrals should be considered as. Uh, the answer we kind of know it's a quantum group invariance of three dimensional manifolds. So let me be more precise. Let's dx4 make some three dimensional manifold. Mm, you consider connections in, let's say, S, U, N bundles. Then the total integral, and here I put some integer k. Uh, k or 2 pi i transcendence of connection. The connection is defined as some uh, uh, it's ratio Tichin to Rayev invariant invariant of manifold for quantum group. And I don't want to explain you what is quantum group. It's, it's quantum group. It's not a group, yeah. yeah. S, S, U, N, Q, where Q is a root of unity. So it's 2 pi i over k plus capital N. And 
с Quantum Groups. А. Okay. So there is some combinatorial prescription. If you have triangulation of your manifold, you can make some finite sum and calculate this number. So let's call it number ZK. Uh, what, uh, and if you look on formulas, what you should put in, in the summation, this main ingredient here it's called Q factorial. Q factorial. So if we have some integer n, the Q, Q factorials the sink and it's called factorial because it's if Q is small, it's proportional to factorials, it goes to one. Mm. Also, Q factorials have some different expansion, asymptotic expansion. But uh, another expansion, this is, is equal to exponent. Yeah, I will suppress this n. So if Q is exponent of 2 pi i over k, very close to 1, and k n goes to infinity. So here n is fixed, and if k n then goes to infinity, then one can meet dialogger from here. Okay. over k, and here k over 2 pi i. So this yeah. mm. So uh, there is something here interesting. Uh, so we, it's kind of maybe can be served as definition of this symbol integral and so on. But then if k goes to infinity, one should expect that uh, one can recover critical points of this chain science function, so classical dialogues. And uh, so the picture, which was first checked in many examples, is that if you consider asymptotic as k goes to infinity of this ZKM, uh, you should meet some of our uh, representations of fundamental group of manifold to SUN, and we take exponent of chi, uh, this exponent of k two pi i transpose of it, and times some corrections. Yeah, so this will be basic uh, thing here. Mm. So there are two things which you can say here. Uh, mm. In last summer, with Lev Rosansky, we proved this in general for group S, something like SO4, uh, but it could, should work for general group. So it's a proof asymptotic expansion, expected asymptotic expansion of ZKM, but the uh, structure group of bundle will be not SUN, but SU2 cross SU2. It's a bit technical, just in order to work with simpler formulas, and things are called derived the row invariants. And uh, the proof is extremely simple. I can just tell you the main idea. Uh, so in this Turai invariance, which is kind of a version of this Shetikin Turai invariance, uh, what one uses, use certain things called 6J symbols. 
Uh, it's you know you know something like this Q. It's a uh, complex number. It's actually algebraic number. It's a cyclotomic field, and G I are from zero to K. Where Q is again roots of case order of unit. So, so there are some numbers which are given by formulas, pretty complicated one. And in order to calculate invariant of the manifold, what you should do, you should make some simplicial decomposition of the manifold. And on each edge, you put a variable, which is symbol, one of the symbols j. If you j, j. Uh, then uh, each simplex gives you six numbers. And you put, take these six j symbols and take product over tetrahedra of these six j symbols and take sum of colorings. There is some extra factor which is not really important here. So this is, I think, which this is invariant. And uh, mm, it turns out that these six j symbols are uh, just in usual norm are quite small. They are about size no, no, no more than two. Uh, this Q factorial uh, have some exponential large values. And because numbers are small, so I can uh, see what is behavior of the sum. And uh, uh, it turns out that asymptotics of this six j symbol is very nice. If k goes to infinity, this I think it has the following geometric meaning. It's either z zero plus or oh, exponentially small. Uh, or something which, uh, some function of j over k, or oh, function of some uh, numbers from zero between zero and one, and uh, uh, the geometric meaning is extremely simple. So you, you have numbers from zero to one. Maybe I should multiply by them by pi. I get six numbers from zero to, to pi, and then I want to, to make a spherical tetrahedron in S3 with such lengths of edges. So uh, zero if, if there is no tetrahedron in S3 with such lengths of edges. And if there is a tetrahedron, then it's sum of two terms. Actually, uh, it's called number six i. Exponent sum u to xi plus where sorry uh, where u is some function and here. Should probably should multiply by k over 2 pi i. Sorry, it's k over 2 pi i, k over 2 pi i. So it's some oscillating, high oscillating things, but of size 1, where u of xi is a function on tetrahedron. So I make tetrahedron with length of edges xi. So I have here some angles between planes, alpha i. It will be sum over x i times alpha i plus volume of this tetrahedron. Mm. It's, it's classical function introduced by Schleffle. Euclidean or spherical? Spherical, spher spherical tetrahedron. It's sh sh Schleffle introduces formula and and uh, the nice thing about this function is derivative is sum over theta i. Oh, alpha i dx i. And so we get sum of terms of size 1 if we uh, decompo uh, of all possible orientation of tetrahedra of some highly oscillating terms. And the sum is uh, essentially equal to concentrated along critical points of this sink. 
and critical point means that if we make this tetrahedral, then sum of angles will be divisible by 2 pi. So it means that locally we can glue it, consider this uh, triangulation of three dimensional manifolds. But globally, one gets a monodromy, and monodromy will be in rotation group, so we get representation of fundamental group to SO4, which basically is the same as C2 cross C2. Uh, so that's mm, uh, kind of trivialization of the story. Uh, but now I want to make some uh, oh, just before going on, I want to say that there was another invariant of three dimensional manifolds, so, uh, also related to quantum, maybe related with some quantum group, but nobody knows. And the asymptotic gives uh, a hyperbolic volume if it's hyperbolic manifolds, and probably Gromov's norm if it's general three dimensional manifold. So it's different behavior to have exponential growth. Uh, but I want to make some different thing with these numbers. Let's make a generating function. So we fix group here at CCN, fix manifold, we get infinite sequence of numbers. Let's make a generating function. So the uh, conjecture about it is this function is its convergence for some small t. A function is its analytic function on universal covering of C minus some finite set. So it has only finitely many critical points and then one can go around. And this finite set is consists from zero and uh, exponents of one or two pi i and values of regulators of elements in K3. So this the same numbers. So uh, this function is analytic, and uh, the reason is kind of mystic reason from for this thing. If you make formally substitute to Feynman integral, that you see that's kind of formally f psi of t is given by some infinite dimensional integral. It's one over one minus t component and what was here uh, 1 over 2 pi i shim sense of connection and the minus 1 uh, so we can make formal manipulation like this and you see that uh, the integral of some function depending on parameter on space of connections but connections are connections in the unitary group and unitary group is a real part of complex group so we integrate of some half infinite dimensional cycle in complex manifold of some holomorphic function. You consider now connections in complex group. And uh, like in picard left theory, you should expect that as integral will be given by, uh, the verification of integral is given by monodromy in some semi-infinite cohomology. And uh, uh, this thing is not defined only when we have changing topology, so that when we have cr critical values. And critical values are complex valued connections. So uh, that's the reason for this conjecture. The number of critical values is finite because it's a set of solutions to some algebraic equations. Representation of fundamental group have finitely many components. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, playing with this came to a bit more general conjecture. Uh, so there are quantum group invariants. It's a horribly complicated expressions, very special type, and uh, more general conjecture uh, is the following. One, just look how uh, these partition functions, uh, what are formulas, and formulas are certain sums of factorials. So, now write zk as some certain explicit sum of products of q factorials, 
and this will be some of again many indices I will uh, later just in a second uh, say where the length and the product of uh, where was my q factorial so qn qni maybe raised to some powers you know I mean, integer powers. So it's uh, basically how partition function looks like. But this number satisfies some inequality. So uh, in, in order to say it, I just formally say the following. So we have a rational polytop in n dimensional cube with rational vertices. And this thing should, should sit in polytop multiplied it by k intersect the n. So this should satisfy certain system of linear inequalities. And also there could be, there should be some, uh, probably some numbers should be divisible by something and uh, let's, let's u will be some compact and open set, cylindrical set in adults. Kind of open and closed set. Uh, it's given by some comparison and this and I should be in, in U. Uh, so we can make uh, certain sums like this and the conjecture is still the same. So without reasoning that uh, this function has an analytic continuation. Uh, some kind of hint on it is this asymptotic expansion because uh, if we believe that this it's a real problem how to make analysis here. It's still nobody knows. But if we kind of formally replace this Q factorials but this first term in synthetic expansion, we get oscillating sums, uh, exponentials of k divided by 2 pi in certain integral combination of the logarithms. And critical points are, gives us uh, values of chern Simons on flat connections. Yeah, and uh, Already, uh, and with Don Zagher, we played with the simplest expressions like this. Not for any three dimensional manifolds, give something horribly complicated, so we played with uh, the simplest uh, story expression. It takes this sum. Uh, Q is again yes. root of unity. Uh, so the conjecture in, in this case means that C of T, the generating function, should be defined on analytic on universal cover C minus zero, one, and here will be root of 24th order of, uh, of 1. Mm. Why root of 24th order? Because if consider what is, is the same as exponent minus 1 or 2 pi i of dialogarithm of 1, which is pi square over 6. And, uh, so this is already the simplest example, still open question, and there are plenty of miraculous identity, identities which we are not able to prove. So uh, one of identities is make essentially the same generating function and modify it a little bit. So we take exponent minus t or 24 and take the following sum from n equals 0 now to infinity. It's essentially the same uh, sum evaluated when exponent minus t is root of unity, it's the same story. And the sum is terminates at some place, it will be zero. Uh, so it's a formal power series, and let's write it. 
I'm just like this, and so the conjecture is that we take some out in or to make a, a, a transformation with this, then we get sine two x divided by two cosine three x. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of one of our first miraculous identities uh, coming from uh, the game and. No. So it doesn't this equation for function we walk through. Sorry? It doesn't algebraic differential equation. No, 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 not at all. No, it's 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 absolutely new transcendental functions and we have no tool at the moment to understand these transcendental functions. Yeah. Yeah, so this kind of story full of mysteries and uh, maybe it's at the end will be very something very simple. Mm. And okay, maybe I stop. Is it right now? Okay. Yeah. Okay, question. Yeah. yeah sorry. In, as, as I mentioned in my talk in that 1973 paper of Simons and myself, where we studied this mm -hmm. Z invariance. Mm -hmm. Continuous invariance of flat bundles. So we observed that you can represent them, in particular put them in the bar resolution yeah. in terms of volumes of spherical synthesis yeah. in the real part, hyperbolic yeah. synthesis, uh, which of course are closely related to uh, these higher logarithm functions. So I'm wondering what's the connection? No, the volumes of spherical simplices, uh, not spherical simplices. Uh, volumes of closed hyperbolic manifolds are all uh, in, in the image of regulator map, so, and it's not a question. And, but for volumes of simplices, the story is more complicated. So let me tell you a few words about this. Uh, So Sasha Goncharov developed the whole machinery for this. It seems that there are some, this one basic function which one can need to calculate plenty of integrals like volume for spherical simplices and so on. This function is a function in, of n variables uh, if you want to calculate some n dimensional integrals which is integral from zero to T1 and take product over x i over. Okay, the iterated integral of logarithms. And for n equal 1, 2, 3, one can express this via polylogarithms. For n equal 4, it's probably, it's already wrong, so it's, it's new functions should appear. And so it's kind of strange why the gear conjecture still holds. So this why only dialogarithms eventually survive in, in the description. Yeah, yeah but uh, oh, this, for these things you can calculate all integrals, which is very non-trivial. Well, uh, I mean, my question was, yeah. what, what we observed yeah. is that, if, if I understand what these regulators are, which I'm not so sure, but yeah. at least the invariance that we consider. Yeah, it's a real imaginary part. We did, we did uh -huh. yeah, well, this I assume when you wrote Borel for the real part, you really meant real continuous, right? Yeah, it's real continuous, yeah, but... Yeah. Okay. So we, we did observe that both of those invariants, real and imaginary part, yeah. could be expressed in terms of the volumes of spherical synthesis. So I'm just wondering what that representation has to do with the formulas that you were <coughs> to write, since there certainly is some connection yeah. with higher logarithm functions. The second part, of the question I would like to ask. At, at that time, something that we worry about a lot, or struggled with, never got anywhere, was the rationality or irrationality okay. properties of the values. And does any of this shed yeah. any light on it? Yeah, the first of all, volumes are kind of secondary functions. The first functions, the basic functions, something like this, and that's 
and okay yeah it's uh, no it's kind of simpler it's have less parameters and what about the rationality but, but I still don't understand yeah. what's, what are you saying in relation to no of course volumes are related uh, expressed through this uh, integrals and polylogram has particular example of integrals and for small dimensions and regulators are also expressed through these integrals and uh, but is, are, are these regulators really the invariants of flat bundles yeah. Okay. So then I guess what I'm trying to understand is that we gave one representation that related them to yeah. simplex volume. Yes. Okay. Can you get from that representation to yeah. the formulas that you're talking about? Uh, simplex volumes are known to be related yes. at least somewhat to polylogarithms, at least to dialogue, right? yeah. and so on. So this is really what I'm asking. And yeah, the it's second uh, question is, can you tell anything about the uh, rationality or the, the rationality of the, of the values? Yeah. No, about volumes, it's really all kind of essential equivalents. V volume, from volumes, it's not clear. It's probably only part of the story about for real imaginary or oh, hyperbolic pol polytopes. But um, in fact, I don't know. And But for rationality, uh, this is... Mm, it's really a question to specialists in transcendental numbers. So the, this is a kind of picture of what integrals, what numbers are irrational, given by an integral of rational functions with algebraic coefficients. And the picture is that integral is zero if and only if you can prove it using integration by part, uh, Stokes form, uh, change of variables. So the, you, uh, by f algebraic manipulation with the same kind of functions. You don't need other functions. And it's a big conjecture, and uh, uh, from this follows all this irrationality, I think, it for polylogarithm of images as well. So it's, it's really a small part of some wider conjecture, uh, which is gradually is people proving some small, for some number or another number. That's it. I mean, are there any numbers that are when suitably normalized that would prove to be irrational? Mm. No, but numbers are given by integrals of rational functions, and then uh, the, the conjecture, if we, so by some means, we can control that we cannot prove that it's zero by uh, using change of variables in Stokes' formula, and then it should be rational, non-zero, and, uh, and so on. But, but have, are there any recent results? No, ah, it's, it's people, I don't know, about number pi people proved it many hundred years ago, but then it's gradually, Square root of two is irrational, and so on. It's 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 it's, 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 it's slow. Yeah, in this context, yeah, it's kind of not very special. Yeah. Are there other questions? So these these invariants involve involve flat connections where the homodromy yeah. could be quite complicated, and the poly logarithm functions have a sort of the unipotent or nilpotent yes. monodromy. And I'm sort of, I don't understand how one very complicated monodromy problem can be described by something as much simpler. Or, or is that? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't answer the question yet. No. Question. No, I don't know what it sounds for. Yeah. Yeah. Two questions. You have these new transcendental functions. Have you tried looking for functional equations? No, nothing. Usually when people find new transcendental functions, there's information out of functional equations. No, the main thing is that they're analytic on unexpectedly large domains. That's the only thing. And the other thing is yeah. that if you could get some continued fraction yeah. representation of something, the yeah. speed of the convergence of the continued fraction can be used to determine whether something is rational, irrational, yeah. or even transcendental. Yeah. So that might be a way to play with it. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so we thank the speaker again.